Okay, so where we left off, I'm going to make some improvements to my spot illustration to bring it back to my poster. So I just made this little solid red fill of blood. Now I'm going to play with some filters. So instead of just blur, you also have some other uh, filter options. And I don't want you to rely on these too much, but you can play with them in little ways, and these might help you kind of finish off. Now, the one I like is called halftone pattern. There's all kinds of like, to me, pretty cheesy ones, like ocean ripples, glass, plastic wrap, and they can be interesting. And these are all right out of Photoshop. But what I like about halftone pattern is that it's based on printing. So you see these little dots. They're set in what's called a half drop pattern, which is like bricks in a wall. And they're offset by one half each row. So if I say OK on that filter, watch what it will do to my red. Generally, I don't like these artistic filters because they were programmed by someone else, right? And they're just kind of things you do on top. Now, obviously, that's not my red, but what can I do? Well, let's go back before I did that. Let's make a duplicate of it, and then let's run that same filter. Now what I can do is that's like a texture overlay, but it's a texture overlay of halftone dots. And if I run it as, let's see, pin light, or soft light, let's do pin light, and then you can see the red dots, and then let's invert it. So I go to image adjustments, invert. And then I can take the opacity down, and it can give just a, a little bit of complexity and texture just to my blood. Then if I add to that some of these layer styles, like an inner glow, really noisy, but not too spread out. And then if I add a gradient overlay to it, And then if I add, let's say, just the very slightest outer glow to it and make that red, but like an orangier red, this is getting to be kind of just pure digital imaging, like graphics. And this is the exact effect. The reason I'm showing you this is because when we started assignment eight, and I showed you kind of the, the thumbnails and the blocking for Stranger Things, and then the title and the use of the type. This is the finished kind of colored uh, outer glow type. And then they added the half tone, the, the printing half drop pattern filter to it. So it looked like it existed in old kind of retro printing. And that is informed by the CMYK color separations that happen when you print something. So I'm showing it to you just on this little example of the blood, but I'm eventually going to show you how that applies to, you can apply it to everything. And so I like that blood. I'm going to keep that, but I might sync it and try moving it down, you know, underneath the line art. Whoops. But above the color. Now I want to do a color hold of the line art, right? So what I'm going to do is go to the black line art, which is locked. 
Come on. And I'm going to do a select color hold of this because I haven't really shown you this with the spot illustration. And I'm just going to select that chunk of the line art, duplicate it, and then do a color fill on that or a color overlay. And that's not what I expected. <laughs> on that line art. Oh, I was copying it from the wrong layer. So I'm on the the black line art layer. You can see how it's a, a locked layer. I'm going to select just those black lines and duplicate it. I'm going to unlock it, the copy, and then do a color overlay on it. And for that color overlay, I'm going to choose a different kind of red that's a lot darker and deeper. And then I can choose whether I want to move that on top of that halftone texture or not. Right? And I think I, I do want to move it on top of that. And then, because it's all rasterized, I can take an eraser and cut it out kind of exactly if I want. Or I take a low opacity, soft edged eraser, and just let it be a little varied in some areas. Right. And I can duplicate it on top of itself. And on the duplicate, I can rasterize that red layer style. And I can adjust it, play with how light it is, how bright it is, until it's just right. So, so many things I can do. And this is just altering the black lines on top of what I've already done. And maybe I'll give it a slight dissolve. Ah, why does it keep doing that? So I move that layer down a little bit. Yeah, so I think I like that overall. Okay, now, how can I give that same sort of textural interest to the whole image? Well, I'm going to take some of those downloaded textures. Like, let's try this crazy one. Bring it on top of everything. It's okay that I'm stretching it because it's okay for textures to be slightly softened, right? You can see how the only texture on top of the texture I brought in is that little half tone and that new color hold effect, right? And now I'm going to take that background texture and I'm going to change its blending mode to pin light, which does a good job of bringing the texture in, or soft light, which is a little bit more subtle, but in this case, better depending on the tones. So I'll zoom in so you can see. So, oh, that texture works great on the skull. You see the little cracks and things it adds. It works great on the blade and on the bone, and it just makes a big difference. 
to kind of finishing off those flat, even duotone colors. So how do I get it to only apply to my illustration? Well, I go to my black line art layer again, the only thing that's locked, and I use contiguous, and I select the empty space around my black line art, and I gotta make sure to remember the little, little gap in the jaw there. And then delete it from the background texture, or better yet, select the inverse, just like we've done many times, and then duplicate it as kind of a, a stamp, right, of texture. Then I can turn off that background texture, smart layer, even delete it. Come on, photo P, stick with me, good. And then I have the texture layer. And that does a whole lot to make it look more hand done, which is what I'm going for. Just gonna delete this little part from it. Get off a magic wand. Yeah, Brendan, if, if you just keep having problems posting it, you can always send it to me in inbox and I can post it for you to Canvas. Um, there's lots of ways to get, get your JPEG images to me. But I, I appreciate your struggles. File formats and posting can be a big headache sometimes. So that helps a lot. If I want it to be stronger, I can always duplicate it, right? And I can even layer up the textures with different opacities and try that. So this is duplicating it, setting the second one to pin light. But I could also try things like overlay. And that just increases the contrast using the texture. So you can have a lot of fun. with texture overlays, not just on your landscapes that are composited, but on your own original artwork. And that's gonna be true for our digital paintings and stuff too. All right, so now on top of that, how can I play with some of these printing effects like I did on the blood? So very simply, I'm going to turn off the background, so it's just a floating spot illustration, and I'm going to hold down Option while I say Merge Down. And what that does is it gives me, let's see if it did, nope. <laughs> what I want that to do Hmm. is give me a, a copy, it's worked before in Photo P, layer of everything this might be too much for Photo P right now, all onto one layer. So instead I can do it like this, I can save my work This is if you want to try playing with the CMYK effects. So I'm going to save it as a PSD, make sure I have it saved as its different layers. And then I'm going to merge those layers. Not flatten the image, but merge them because I want it still cut out without a background. So layer, merge down. Select everything except the background. In fact, I might even just get rid of, oh, it's because they're locked, that's why. So I need to unlock these before I can merge them. Then if they're unlocked, I should be able to just hold down option and say layer merge down. It still doesn't like it. So I've saved it. So what I'm gonna do